Hi there. It's October the 8th and we continue our progress through the prophecies of Jeremiah, who in Hebrew is Yomi Yahu, meaning the Lord promotes or the Lord establishes. Uh, we're reading the whole of chapters 10 and 11 today. At the beginning of chapter 10, uh, God appeals the, through Jeremiah for people not to follow the idolatry, the vain idolatry, the trifling idol idolatry of the nations. He says that the gods that they worship are just their own hands. They make them from the trees. They, they smelt them themselves in the furnace and they don't do any good. In fact, he says they neither do good nor evil. So the people are not to be afraid of them either way because they're non-gods. They're just nothing. There are, there, there's no value in them at all. God alone, it says, is the true God. God alone is the king of the nations. And there's something very interesting that occurs in verse 11 of chapter 10 here. Chapter, uh, verse 11 is written in Aramaic, not in Hebrew. All the rest of the chapter is written in Hebrew. But this one verse is written in Aramaic, which was the diplomatic language of the time, the international language. And it's almost as though Jeremiah is being inspired to say to these nations, that there's no point following the non-gods. They have not made heaven and earth. They will disappear. They will perish. There is only one true God. And then he balances that in the rest of the chapter with the, the description of God's power, the one who has the power over the rain, the one who has the power over the earth, the heavens, over the whole of creation. While the graven images, he says, are in Hebrew hevel, which means transient, trifling, not to be bothered about. But then there is the speaking out of the chaos that is to come and the grief that's to come because the people of Judah will not listen to this. They're still intent in going on after the Balim. They're still intent in going on after these graven images that God has says are not worth going after. And, and Jeremiah appeals at the end for his people and, and on behalf of his people saying, Oh, correct me, but don't deal with me in your anger. Uh, because I know that you are in control. I know that man himself cannot order his own life. But when you correct me, correct me to restore me, not to, uh, not to throw me away, not to overcome me, not to overwhelm me and destroy me. Then in chapter 11, uh, the Lord speaks through Jeremiah about the covenant. He reminds them of the covenant that was made, the covenant with Israel, uh, that when God brought them into the wilderness, when he brought them out through the Red Sea, when he delivered them from the land of Egypt. Uh, he says that you are my people. He told them you will be my people. I will be your God. I will give to you the, the Ered Zavat Halava Devash, the land flowing with milk and honey. And God appeals for listening, the word in Hebrew Shomer. He appeals for listening, which actually we translate as obedience. But he just wants the people to listen to him. Uh, but this is but but this is falls on deaf ears and the people turn back to the sins of their forefathers and this is talking about the current Judah that Jeremiah is speaking to the, the he, they turn back to the sin of the forefathers and therefore God says okay I'm not going to listen to you why don't you try going to the the Baalim why don't you try them and see if they can deliver you from the what's coming from the north this onslaught that's coming from the north i set you up says god as an olive tree there's a reference here to israel as the olive tree which of course later the apostle paul uh, described uh, israel as the olive tree into which we are grafted god says here in jeremiah i made you the olive tree but actually you've you've rebelled against me and you've gone down to the the, the images and to the balim you've gone follow them and then lastly in the chapter 11, there's a couple of verses about what's going on in Jeremiah's hometown of Anatot. Anatot is where Jeremiah comes from, and it seems that the prophets there, there are prophets there who are prophesying against Jeremiah. They are coming back and saying things against Jeremiah's prophecies, and actually they're pro plotting to kill him. It rather reminds us of Jesus' words later on when he says a prophet is without honour in his own country. Here we find Jeremiah in his hometown who is being invaded against and he's being spoken against. But God says, don't be afraid, Jeremiah, I'm going to cut off those false prophets of Anatot and I'm going to justify you in the word that you are speaking. It's amazing that God constantly refers in his words through Jeremiah to this covenant that he's made, to this costly promise that he's made costly for himself in that he's intent on bringing his people back to himself costly for his people in the sense that when they don't listen to God they bear the brunt of it and they bear the destruction of it 
we can be so glad that we are included in the new covenant, the renewed covenant of God. And when we have faith in Jesus as Messiah through the cross, he covers all of our rebellion, all of our sin. If we return to him, if we come back to him, if we follow his ways, we will find all the blessings that are promised through the covenant coming to us. Have a very good October the 8th.